Fear. Fear can come from many different places, and they can take many different forms. Some of our greatest fears come from actual experiences that we had. But what about the experiences that are fabricated? The experiences that were made by a person? The experiences that could be digital? I'm of course talking about the internet and the many videos within the internet that we consider to be scary. But how does someone create a scary video? A medium that is already restricting in itself. Well, the simplest solution that I could find is you have to create something that scares you. Well, okay, that seems like it would be pretty simple, but how do I scare myself making a video? Well, we're going to be answering that and exploring a lot more in this behind the scenes of the horror attraction. So, the question is, how did I scare myself into coming up with the idea for the horror attraction? Well, to be honest, I didn't intend on scaring myself. I wasn't even conscious when it happened. But scaring myself is only a fraction of where the idea came from. Because believe it or not, there are three different sources for where the idea of the horror attraction came from. Two of them are related, and one of them I just so happened to stumble upon. So, what are these different sources that would spawn the idea for the horror attraction. Well, to answer that question, we got to go back to the beginning, the very beginning of where it all started. A real life experience that I had about one or two years ago. And this experience is true. This is a true story of something that happened to me. About a year or two ago, me, my girlfriend, and a couple of my friends planned a trip to the county fair. It was spring break around this time and so we decided to buy some tickets and have some fun. Every experience I've ever had at the fair has always been the same. You walk up to this huge wall that says fair on the front of it with a bunch of colorful flags. Then once you're inside you get to enjoy things like the carnival rides, the carnival food, you go through the fun houses that have the mirror maze, the funny mirrors, the, the slide, the weird parkour segment that make you feel like an American ninja. Then after that we go to my favorite favorite part. The petting zoo. It actually is my favorite part. Uh, I just don't like that the animals are in such enclosed spaces. It makes me feel bad about the animals' well-being. But, I mean, they do have a bunch of exotic animals that you can check out and pet, like um, a, a chicken, uh, a pig, a goat, uh, a cow, uh, a kangaroo, an emu, a alpaca, and a zebra? I think at one point, that memory is so far back and so foggy, I'm not even sure if that was real or if that was a dream. After that, you go to the expo building where they have a bunch of vendors, you can buy all kinds of stuff from them. And then you have the uh, preschool artwork gallery. It's just a bunch of artwork made by preschoolers. It's as cute as it sounds. After that, all you have left to do is play some carnival games, probably try some of the, I don't know, face paint stuff and uh, you're done. Just pretty much exhausted at that point of the day and you leave. And that's been the same routine every single time that we've ever went. And mind you, the county fair that we have has all kinds of rides, but the one ride that I always avoided, and I don't know why I avoided it, but I've never been on, is a dark ride. Yeah, believe it or not, I had not gone on a dark ride. And my county fair has three of them. If you've never been on a dark ride, specifically the ones at the county fair, they're not like the ones at theme parks, depending on what theme park you go to. But for example, Disney and the dark rides they have, they are themed based. So they have a theme, whether it's Winnie the Pooh or Pinocchio, or it's a small world. You get in a cart and you go down into these this, this building and it's pretty dark, which is why it's called dark ride. Uh, and they have a bunch of sets that they make that are either cute or disturbing depending on how you view it. Funny enough, my favorite dark ride at Disney is the Haunted Mansion, but it's only because it's intentionally spooky that it makes it kind of charming. And there's something relaxing about just sitting in a dark ride, 
just going through it, listening to the music, not having to do anything, and watch all these these sets just be presented to you. But that's not like a dark ride at the fair. And on this day, we decided to go on a dark ride. So we marched on up, and I should have been suspicious of the fact that we were the only ones waiting in line for this ride. But there was a ride manager, and he had two carts ready for us to get on. And of course, my two friends rushed over to the first cart, followed by my girlfriend. They all buckled up. And I tried to get in, but noticed, oh, there's no space. And so the ride manager said, sorry, there's only three per cart. You can either split up or you can go by yourself. I bet that sounds pretty familiar, right? And my friends, unlike the ones in the horror attraction, were actually a bit considerate and decided whether they should get off and split up or if they should stay. And I told them, stay. You already have your seatbelts. It's completely fine. I'll go by myself. I sat in my cart and I watched as their cart started to move. The door opened and they disappeared. Then the door closed. The ride manager asked, are you ready? To which I replied, yep. And my cart started to move and the door opened and I was introduced to darkness pitch black because all the interior is painted black the walls are super close uh, all you can hear is the rattling of the coaster moving through the track and occasionally I would pass by some windows with plexiglass and there's a Chucky doll on the other side or a spooky mask or uh, some other doll there was probably like one loud sound and that was it. And uh, as the door opened, I see my friends have already gotten off the ride and they're laughing as they see me in my cart by myself, just moving down the line. And I get off and they ask me, was it scary? Were you scared? And I said, bro, I was so, so scared. Was not scared at all. This is a, an insult to anything scary in my opinion. Then we went about the rest of our routine and we left. So why is this story so significant then? It's because that experience triggered something else. I don't know why that memory stuck with me, but my mind thought it was important enough to turn it into a nightmare. And I don't get nightmares often, but this nightmare played pretty much like what I experienced. When we went, the sun was kind of going down, but here it was black. I couldn't see anything around me. I could only see the fluorescent light bulbs in front of me and they lit up the tracks for us to get on to a ride. My friends go up ahead of me and they get in the first cart and I notice there's no space for me. And the guy says, Whoa, sorry kid, it's only three per cart. You guys can either split up or you can go by yourself. And before I could even make a choice, I was put into the cart and I watched as my friends started to move, the door opened, and they disappeared. Then my cart started to move, the door opened, and I went in. And it was dark again, but way darker than any pitch black room I've ever been in. Occasionally there were spotlights that would turn on to reveal some prop that they set up, but the room felt bigger. Then it started to go to another room. That room was pitch black, occasionally a spotlight to reveal some prop. Then we go to another room and then we enter another room, a bunch of animatronics right in front of me. And I can even see just ahead are my friends just going into the next room. And before I can shout to say anything to get their attention to look back, they're gone. And I'm moving slowly through this big dark room and then it stops. The lights come on and I'm faced with these deactivated animatronics in front of me. There's a couple stuff around them, such as presents and barrels and stuff. And even behind them towards an actual wall that I can see is a facade of some log cabin with, uh, again, barrels and gift boxes and balloons and some other props or animatronics that are standing in the back super still. And I had been waiting there for so long, I got bored and I decided to step out of the cart and just examine all these different props and facades. And as I'm exploring and I'm looking at the door that I had just come in through, I'm trying to see if there's any way I can open it. And there's just no use. They're locked. And then I see something. There's a figure in a costume 
and they're dragging something by their side and they're paying no attention to me almost like they don't even know I'm there and they open up a door that I had never seen before and they walk right into the door and they're gone so I run up to the door and I open it and I see this figure in a costume and he turns to look at me and he freaks out and he tries to get away being there for so long desperate and panicking to get out and i just wanted someone to help me and there's clearly someone who can i rush over to them i tell them to stop and before they can go through the door i yank them by the shoulder pull them to the ground and their mask comes off to reveal an animatronic and then i wake up so yeah we have the experience that led to the dream that led to a big portion of the ride that you see in the horror attraction and even down to a scene where we see an animatronic that seems to move like a person but is not a person so what comes next on comes source three to complete the rest of the story i added a loop that was inspired by a reddit disney security story about it's a small world a reddit story of a security guard that worked at disney world specifically Disney Resort. Now, I don't want to give away too much of the story, and I don't necessarily know the name of it, but I can find the actual Reddit post and you can read it yourself and you'll see a lot of the parallels that I use for this video. Now that we're done with recapping where I got my inspiration from, it's time to move on to the fun part, the making of the horror attraction. Finally, I made it through the whole script. God damn. Before we get into the meat and onions of how I made the horror attraction. We first have to discuss what George was wearing in the horror attraction. There's two live action plates that are recorded. They're basically of me, and uh, George, George me, is wearing a uh, a pretty snazzy hoodie. What is he wearing? What is he wearing? What is he? Wa He's wearing this. He's wearing this. This is Creator Inc.'s Five Nights at Freddy's hoodie. Look, look. Ah, fuck. look at the back. We got some nice writing right here and then top it to top it all off if you don't want any like i don't know some clean shoes you don't want shoes maybe you don't want uh that maybe you don't want these t-shirts maybe you don't want this hoodie maybe you don't want these clean hats maybe you want a coin what's that right there it's a faz token and then right here death coin we got a death coin they're pretty big some ASMR for you right there. Fat tokens. Get them at creatorinc.com. That and I lost my Twitter account. So if you can go follow my new Twitter account. Because my other one got hacked by some loser. Um, it's in my YouTube lists. But I'll also leave it in the link down below. Please go follow it because I miss you guys. And you guys don't even know that I got hacked. So. So the first thing that I knew I was going to need when making the horror attraction was a layout for the actual track to go through. So based on what I can remember from my dream and what I remember from the ride, I came up with this. I just made the letter E. <laughs> you basically got the idea. This would be the waiting area line. We go through the zigzag, go through all the rooms. There's the back door or back room come back around and you're back at the start we needed to make that in blender and i did make that in blender here it is the beautiful curve but i can't just have a curve because i need an actual physical track to make so that's what i did i made a physical track it's uh got a bit of concrete texturing some metal uh brims along the edges we have the actual main track that acts as an anchor for the cart and then you have these little bars that go across it they all have like array modifiers and a curve modifier to follow the curve so that way i didn't have to do that manually scientific so once i made the tracks i had to make a cart to go on the track so that's what i did i i think it's very spectacular i think it's very beautiful i textured this myself uh it is made of a lot of different parts so you got a chain you got the actual bar that goes down you have that you have wheels and you have this little anchor thing here all these parts when you duplicate this cart because i'm gonna need this cart multiple times and i'm gonna need multiple carts so instead of just duplicating the cart with all these pieces adding on to the geometry and the file size of this blend file i just put it all in a collection called cart then using Control a you can pick 
a collection instance and make an instance based on your collection. And there it is. You have a bunch of carts that are all duplicates. Of course, you can't edit them or anything, but you can move around and add like constraints onto them. Uh, and that's what we did. So you can see they're all just one solid object and they don't double or triple or quadruple the geometry or file size of your blend file. Here, this is our, our main cart. This is the one that has all the keyframes. The good thing about making it this way and being allowed to have constraints on this uh, instance is that we can add a follow path constraint and we use the track as the path. And now with follow curve activated and fixed position activated, we can adjust the offset factor. What does the offset factor do? Well, you can keyframe the offset factor to animate it and it controls your cart. All these keyframes represent the, uh, the points in which the cart is starting, where the cart will stop, where it will pick up again. Then when it starts to slow down as it gets closer to the drop and then it accelerates goes down the drop and then continues throughout the rest of the ride scientific but uh there's something missing we need the actual camera to look through so we have a camera we just place the camera where i would consider the head of the person in the ride to be it is parented to the cart so wherever the cart moves the camera is able to move as well i can pick it up you can see that when i move the cart i move the camera there's a problem with this though we are going to need a way to animate the camera while the cart is moving so we already have the camera parented to the cart so whenever the cart is moving the camera is going to move we don't have to worry about animating the camera to the actual movement of the cart what we do need to be worried about is uh how we're going to get any motion capture for the camera and i'm going to share a secret with you guys i'm sure i've shared this before but if you ever are using blender and you want to be able to use some kind of motion tracking for your camera without having to animate it all the way through there's a little add-on called virtue camera it is both an app and it is an add-on for blender so what you do is you install the add-on right down here i have virtue camera then what you do is you open up the app and the app is going to look something like that you're going to have uh, a simple setup and it's going to ask you to enter a manual ip address which is your address or you can just use scan QR code and now you can see, you know, I have the camera are turned on. In Blender, you turn on the add-on by pressing start serving. It's going to pop up with a QR code. Then we're going to scan that QR code. It's going to show your camera, the available camera in your scene. You're going to pick that camera, the camera that you want to use the track. Press done. You're going to get this little setup here and you're going to see a little close eye. You're going to see all these different parameters. And basically what you do is in Blender, you wanna make sure you press zero so that way you have in the view of your camera. You're going to tap that eye in the center. You're going to see what your virtual camera sees in Blender. You have all these different controls from how smooth the motion tracking is gonna be how uh, the position of scale, so how big do you want to feel in your scene? Do you want to be very big? You turn that all the way up and you're basically in a miniature set or you turn it all the way down and you're very small in this big set. This button's to record. I'm not sure what this recording button is for if it's just to record anything at the current moment. Then you have this little link up here. You press that link. It's going to ask you to move your camera around. So I like to move it left and right. And now look at that. With my phone, I can look around my scene and I might be a bit too big. So I'm going to turn the scale down a bit. So now I'm in the cart and I'm in my chair. So because I'm in my chair with my phone, I can just watch my animation as it's going through and the cart will start to move. And now I'm going through the actual and I'm looking around watching all of my little animations happen right in front of me. Now, I'm obviously doing this without recording the actual keyframes. If you wanted to record the, the keyframes, then essentially what you would do is while you're still, you know, in the motion, you press the little red uh, arrow button. It's going to count down. And now you start to look around and it's going to start keyframing all of your movement. So let's say we're done with that. You just press the button. It's going to stop blinking. So it's not no longer gonna have the motion tracking. 
but then you go back into Blender, and all your motions just been captured. It's just that easy. Scientific. And let's say, you know, you mess something up, you want to do it again. Everything from Blender 3.6 and below, all you can just do is, you know, you start tracking again by pressing the link button, and then you press record again. The problem is, I'm in 4.0 and they haven't updated it to be compatible just yet with 4.0 so i can't exactly uh just record again i have to like stop the server and sometimes it doesn't stop i have to try to like disconnect it from uh my app and again it's and now it'll start it's just it's just been a whole mess i haven't been able to get a consistent use out of it for 4.0 so if you have blender 3.6 and below there's a lot of compatibility with that, and you shouldn't have this problem, but that's just one of the bugs I found. In the end, it still works. Just save it, close it, open it up again, open the app again, and then try again. If you really want to use 4.0, but I suggest using Blender 3.6 and below if you really want, you know, something that's smoother to use. So now, we have our cart, we have our track, we have the camera attached to the cart, and we have the motion for the cart, and we have a way to motion capture the camera. Now, we just need the rest of the ride because we don't have the, look at this. This is just a giant E. So I do this by making each room at a time. So the first room I have is labeled line entrance. You can probably imagine what that is. These are cards. Uh, these are basically tree PNGs. If I wanted it outside and you know, it's nighttime and I don't feel like modeling a bunch of trees, Normally what I'll do is I'll get a PNG or a transparent image with the uh, trees and there you go. Now you have trees. You found out my secret. Great job. Here is the uh, line entrance. This is no actual entrance. This is just a blocked off area painted black. You have your railings, you have the path, and you have everything else. You can see some, uh, it's called Z fighting over there and that's because all of these are planes that I drew. So these are, these act as like decals, even this one right here, even the, uh, the entrance. I drew all of these little assets to use. Then we have our cart in the center. If I go into render, you see we have lighting. It doesn't look as good as, uh, when I rendered it. So what's the, the magic sauce that makes everything come together in the end that adds a bit of realism? Well, I'll tell you, it's basically volume. Look at that, I turn on volume, and now we have a bit of haze, a bit of fog. So there's a, a little lesson in trickery. Scientific. So that's the line entrance. Now the second room, or I guess room number one, is the uh, 83 location. So the 83 location is the ones with the fun time looking uh, Fredbear and endoskeletons. So that's what these are. These are broken down uh, Fredbear endoskeletons. Even this guy over here who's uh, in the vent. He's just crawling through. This is just a, a vague little cutout. Uh, we got balloons. These doors don't lead to anywhere. We have fog on the floor. We have the track in place. And we have this guy, our favorite guy. This guy, Yellow Bear. Yellow Bear, you can see he's kind of, you know, crappy. He doesn't look all that good in uh, once you get him out of the lighting. But here he is. He has his little animation right about here. So there he goes. He just jumps out of that little dark hole and he'll go through his cycle animation and he'll stop. He doesn't even go back into the hole. He just stops. So yeah, it's just this big cutout, his hat's clipping and uh, his little lighting setup right here. Each room has a different uh, intensity of volume. And so sometimes I'll give each room its own volume box. But uh, now you can see it goes to nothing. That's because we have to turn on room two. Room two is basically the 85 location where we have all the withards or in this case broken animatronics freddy's going through his animation cycle we have the cupcake right on top of this little tv here once the cart reaches a certain point we'll have foxy jump out then as it starts to cruise we'll get the bonnie little jump scare he doesn't really do a whole lot then over here cart starts to turn and we're faced with Chica and her infamous bathroom stall. And then she closes it, and that's pretty much it. There are these little ribbons that you see. Well, there's one, there's wires, there's a bunch of lights. 
Uh, but these ribbons that you see, they're th these thin little planes. All of these are actually uh, those little fairy lights. Look at these. These are just 2D images. Little bulb that acts as lights that I strung up everywhere. But they're literally just a flat plane. So if you want to figure out how to optimize your scene without, you know, taking away too much detail, that's how you, you go about doing that. Add an image that looks like it's 3D. So then the cart starts to move into the next room, which is room three. Room three is the uh, still 85, but this is mainly the child incident room. We have the doors open up. We have Spring Bonnie running through his cycled animation. Pretty standard. And of course, we have the skeletons. So, funny story about these skeletons, right? Uh, I was in a VC in, on Discord with some of my uh, online friends and team and stuff like that. And uh, I was making this scene. I was working on setting everything up. I had the chairs set up. And this is basically just a recreation of that one scene from Pirate's pre show or Pirate Cove pre show. I have even the same text on the wall, just with blood and stuff, the same balloons, the same chairs. I added some blood splatter on the floor, which that's just a PNG as well. Uh, but then it came to this scene where I needed something, a prop to sit in these chairs. <laughs> and initially there were going to be mannequins. Like I couldn't find little mannequins. And so I was like, you know what? Does anybody have models of kid corpses? Does anyone have corpses of kids? I don't think it's any surprise no one had corpse models of kids. So I just settled for these little skeletons. They're not even like proper skeletons of kids. They're just, just like regular skeletons that I scaled to look more like kid proportions. So uh, yeah, I guess that was for the best because that would have been awkward to have uh, models of kid corpses. <laughs> Good thing we didn't do that, but now we have all these little wires that act as like the marionette uh, and all the uh, the stripes that the marionette has on the arms and legs. Puppet, the puppet jumps out. After that, move on to the next room. Now room four is the 87 location. Although in my FNAF VHS timeline, I don't have necessarily a whole lot of videos that explore what happened in the 87 location. I don't even have models that I'm happy with that represent the toys. But yeah, they have their animation. We have kitty rides. We have, the, again, those little strips that make up the, uh, the light bulbs. We have a vent. And uh, eventually they start to glitch out. They cycle through their animation. The ride stops. Uh, and then the lights come on Once again, it looks a bit flat right now because we're not getting a whole lot of light bouncing and uh, volumetrics So again, we just turn on the volume box and now we it adds a bit of depth uh, We have these black light PNGs. So these are all just images that you can just take off the wall and move them anywhere uh, They have an emission texture. So if you've ever wanted to do black light in a in one of your scenes all you have to do is create a gradient, a gradient map, and then an emission map. And that basically is faking the illusion that some parts are glowing brighter than others. I think I can even shift this around. You can kind of see the shadow for where the light doesn't touch. And if I wanted everything to be brighter, you just increase this. But that's how you fake having black light. Before we get into the back room, I want to show you guys the other room, which is the spring trap room. So this room, it's pretty simple. We have these planes that represent cloth. These these aren't even like ribbons. This is just one plane with an image. Uh, we have these beams up on the ceiling. We have a bunch of dirty texture in the walls and the floor. We have these wooden cutouts that kind of look like flames, almost like a tunnel to hell. Uh, and then we come down the tunnel. Oops. What are you doing back there? You guys aren't supposed to see that. All right, cool. <laughs> so, so we have this tunnel, and you can see once the cart starts to move, the there's keyframes for the lights, uh, for the light to get brighter. Uh, there's just a bunch of wires and cables. There's a spotlight. This room is pretty empty. Uh, there isn't a whole lot going on, but I made all these wires. And there's also another cube in here, as again, as again, as again, like I said, there are some rooms that have more uh, volume intensities than others. This one, for example, has a volume absorption node that essentially 
creates light absorption, which is the further the light goes, the weaker it gets. So you, as you increase this, the less light leaks through. So if I were to take this all the way down and we were to go to the render view, you can see there's much more light lighting up the, the scene. But as I start to increase this, less light starts to leak through and we're left with a dark pit even though it's not a giant room that's just pure black. So that's how you do uh, light absorption. And of course, I have all these speckles here. This is a add-on I think I got, or it's a, a Blender file with a uh, geometry node setup. Uh, it, it's pretty cool. It has a lot of different parameters that you can mess with, uh, but it basically look like these little images that make up dust. And you can change like the color of these. You can change... Uh, the brightness of these I think these have an emission texture yep you can change the brightness of these you can change the border strength if you want it to be like just straight up dots or if you want them to be kind of faded I like mine to be not solid faded and then I want them to be subtle so now they just look like particles and they're just planes and geometry notes so it doesn't add to the blend file a whole lot. Yeah, if you're interested in dust, there's a lot of add-ons to create dust. Dust creates depth and detail. So that's just something to keep in mind. Scientific. Once the cart reaches this point, the cart will go through and it's just a black room with slight bits of plaster peeking through. It'll come up here and there's nothing. Mainly because I didn't really plan on anything being there initially, but what there is, are the back rooms. So the first back room is one that you guys have already seen before in the horror attraction. It's the one where these endoskeletons appear in. You have this little top of the carousel, a bunch of these shelves, extra endoskeletons from Mediocre Maker video that I made uh, involving a Studio C Freddy and it, he has this uh, endoskeleton. There's a bunch of pipes along the walls, there are these uh, beams, metal beams that are holding everything up, all these wires. There's a little ghosty, there's a kitty ride that's messed up with textures, there's a dumpster, there's the GRIM REAPER! There's a ladder, and there's a, a bunch of skeleton bones right there. And of course you have the door that leads into the, uh, the next back room. Going into the next back room, we have these guys, a bunch of endoskeletons from uh, my vintage models, a bunch of piping and wires, and you have the infamous hallway, or at least the door that goes into the infamous hallway. Lair she's it's quite a beaut. Come around here. And something you might notice is the map of this place doesn't make any sense at all. For example, if we come up here, there are two rooms that are overlapping each other. The 85 room and the spring trap room. So we have to turn off room number two. Now, if we come in here, it's all emptied out. Now, of course, we got a cube here for uh, a Boolean effect. Just turn that off. Huzzah! We have light, but you can see it's this is meant to be the hallway that contains spring trap and the little button that plays spring trap's little animation. Um, and initially, Springtrap was in a horror attraction where you just walk through a haunted house and he would be locked up in this room. But I figured a dark ride is a much better idea and I'll just add a bunch of streamers and connect this hallway to the horror attraction ride. Uh, and he kind of just acts as a, a prop in the, the back rooms. So this whole hallway, you can see there's the end of the hallway here. There really isn't anything of use for this in a dark ride if it's just not going to be shown to the public. So I figured Springtrap can be seen as almost like a afterthought or something that's meant to be locked up in the back. So that's all the back rooms there. That's the hallway. And even after that, we go to room 7, which is the uh, hallway that we see at the end. Even this is bleeding into the back room and the uh, the other hallway. You can see the streamers and the border. So we have to close off the hallway and turn off the second back room. And this is the uh, the other room that or the hallway that we don't see, the one that George runs down. 
It's got a bunch of wooden beams, dirty brick walls. It's got uh, some piping and wires. It's meant to look very like unfinished. And it's very long. And if we actually turn on Fredbear, which Fredbear is a part of the hallway, but he's a part of this as well, because Fredbear's head is actually meant to kind of go down this hallway. Initially, when I was planning for George's death, when he would run down this way, instead of the cart, I had a second animation for Golden Freddy, or the Yellow Bear, and his head was meant to run down and we would see George get attacked by him. But uh, I decided to change that. I even had a part where the yellow bear head kind of fades into the cart. So initially you see yellow bear's head coming at you and then it fades into the cart and then it'll end. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I just felt like it's better just to leave it as the cart because it was way too much to deal with uh, that short span of time that you see the yellow bear head and then you start to see everything else. But uh, yeah, come right here. You can see that him and the cart start to move down the hallway. And then it stops right there. Pretty slow, but uh, that was the initial idea. Now I'm sure the other thing that you guys have probably wondering about is uh, the live action takes that I did. So when I was making the horror attraction, uh, and I had the ideas for the segments that were live action where I wanted him to be walking around kind of contemplating to himself I recorded myself over a green screen just as I did with the um, the case of Edward Morris cleared out the green screen made myself into a transparent video uh, and now and you can see they're just planes these are image planes and they don't really do a whole lot other than display the image and there I am. So there's me on the rails. And there's another one with me standing over here walking around. You can see I'm wearing a hat and I got my, my uh, creator ink jacket or hoodie, whatever. And even the light, what this, this really helps with is uh, adding shadows and clips. And even for when you want the live action plate to capture some light. Because you can see this plate right here. This is capturing some of the uh, the light from the black light. I could probably catch some of the shadows. You can kind of see the light start to bounce off of me. And so you can get accurate colors and lighting this way. Uh, and you can even get some shadows. But the problem is, you know, with it being a 2D plane, there's only so much you can do with, uh, you know, 3D shadows. Because it's, it's a flat image. But you can see me standing over here i'm casting a shadow over this area right here and this could be really helpful but you have to play your cards right and know exactly what kind of scenes that you want to use these for otherwise you know as soon as you turn a corner they become paper thin and that's pretty much the conclusion of this uh this behind the scenes video so i hope you guys did enjoy i hope this was educational for you guys i hope this guys inspired you to kind of try to do some of your own stuff using some of the techniques that i showed i'll catch you guys later all right thank you guys so much for watching bye